when people are rough sleeping in particular, there's, you know, there's not always many resources available to them. And so, uh, so there is, you know, theft is not uncommon, uh, which obviously is a criminal activity. Um, but we also kind of have things like the fact that many people, even if they didn't have a substance misuse issue when they went onto the streets, will frequently end up with one. Whether that's because, um, you know, everyone around them is doing it and it's like, you know what, it's, it's rough on the streets, I might as well. Or whether that's because, and this does happen, um, drug dealers will target homeless people because they know they're quite vulnerable, they know they're in a bad way, they know that if they get them hooked on to stuff, they'll actually be, you know, a very good regular customer. So in the UK, it's not illegal to be homeless in the UK, but currently there are civil laws and criminal laws which make the behaviours and activities of homeless people in the UK illegal. In Hemel Hempstead, let's just say, I had this one particular police officer who, who knew me and he was such a nice bloke, but yet he had a job to do and I understand that and I appreciate that. But then there's some other police officers that just really wasn't nice. Even if they know you, they don't know you, you know, they're so hard on you, like I got back problems. <clears throat> so I never used to give the police any trouble anyway. But they're always on your case. Even if you're just walking through and you've done absolutely nothing wrong, you just come out of the court, so you've done nothing, you've done no stealing, no nothing, you know, no drugs, nothing like that at all, they still pull you over. Um, and by criminalising the activities of homeless people in the UK makes it very difficult for homeless people to exist without committing a crime. You know, if, if, you, get, if you get caught begging, you get caution, penalised for it, whatever you want to call it, but you only get so many chances, like two, I think. Um, so I, I've known a few people to uh, be kicked out of the centre and go to prison just just for that alone. Um, the amount of people that shoplift is unbelievable. It's a lot more than what you think. Um, so most of them end up going to prison. So, for example, it's illegal to be drinking in public in certain parts of city areas. It's illegal to be found begging, to be receiving, asking for money. Um, if you didn't have beggars, people wouldn't be able to show humanity. Um, so, in a way, they provide a service. <laughs> you know, it's not that I've got anything against begging, it's just that I can't do it myself. I just can't do it. You're not going to have um, a sufficient um, uh, income often, is, which is the, the case. You're not going to have sufficient material resources. You're not going to have all the, the, the very many things that we need just to kind of get through from a day to day. I mean, I've, done, I've been hungry and I've walked, into, um, I've walked into stores and I'm talking about well before the... Uh, what do you call it, they, all the security that they have these days. And I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I had a tin of ham in front of me, a big tin of ham, one of those big oval ones, big tin of ham in front of me, and I just couldn't do it. I think because a few times that I did steal when I was a kid, petty stuff, uh, I just felt so bad about it. And nine times out of ten, I always got caught anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> So that in itself, as a context, is likely to generate certain forms of criminal activity which are going to be just about how do you get through to get enough to eat, how do you get enough to stay warm, how do you get enough to actually have sufficient life resources just to actually survive. If we think about the criminalisation of homelessness, what we see is that as well as historical legislation like the Vagrancy Act that's used, we also see the introduction of things like public spaces protection orders or PSPOs as they're often called. Although government guidance from 2017 says that PSPOs shouldn't criminalise rough sleeping and homelessness, the Freedom of Information request that the Manifesto Club put in in 2019 found that three local authorities are still uh, issuing PSPOs in relation to activities relating to rough sleeping 
and that about 20 or so are still using these to criminalise things like begging or loitering in public spaces. And we are seeing increasingly local authorities relying on the police and um, uh, we're seeing increasing police monitoring of homeless people living on the streets in order to clamp down on vagrancy related offences. And so we've seen about 70% increase in vagrancy related offences uh, since 2006 to current times, we've seen a 70% increase uh, there. So as we're seeing a rise in numbers of homelessness, we're also seeing a rise in the numbers of civil orders and criminal laws that are used against the homeless as well. A second dimension, which is, is very, very important, particularly in the context of rough sleepers, is of course the visibility and the very public nature of the actual homelessness itself and therefore often the very public nature of the criminal activity um, which is much more likely to be policed and much more likely to be identified and therefore dealt with by the criminal process more broadly. So you have in the first instance where many people will often break the law, they may break the law in a private space. They may break the law in their homes. They may break the law in spaces which are not being observed so readily and under such surveillance by wider society. But somebody on the street, somebody who is very, very visible to public surveillance and very, very visible to the, um, the policing and then the criminal process. The kind of behaviours that they will in undertake is likely or much more likely to fall under the remit of the criminal law. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.